Hello guys, good day. Welcome to another video lecture in ACP 311, Accounting for Special Transactions. In this video lecture, we will be discussing another revenue recognition concept, but this time focusing on LTCC or long-term construction contracts. Okay, when we talk about long-term construction contracts, these are construction projects that extend through more than one accounting period. Usually, these are construction projects for the government. Example of these projects are the construction of water dams, bridges, flyover, and metro railway transit. The standard defines construction contract as a contract specifically negotiated for the construction of an asset or a combination of assets that are closely interrelated or interdependent in terms of their design, technology, or their ultimate purpose or use. On many long-term construction projects, the buyer and the seller agree in advance on the contract price. So in this case, we will be on the point of view of the contractor or the seller. We assume that we are the accountant of the contractor. In agreeing to the contract price, the construction company must have some reasonable basis for estimating the cost to be incurred under the contract so as to assure satisfactory return. In agreeing to perform the contract work, the construction company must feel that the probability of collecting the contract price from the buyer is sufficiently high to warrant the investment of capital and labor services. So under these conditions, the criteria for revenue recognition are met prior to completion of the contract. So recognition of revenue during the period of construction is therefore justified in most cases. So in this um, topic, we will be discussing particularly on the timing on where, on when are we going to recognize revenue. Since again, um, we are dealing with long-term construction contracts as what I have mentioned earlier that it generally um, extends for more than one accounting period until the project or until the contract will be ended. So in this topic, we will be ascertaining on which level in the construction um, contract we are to recognize profit from that particular um, project. In computing for in computing and recognition of construction revenue under long-term construction contracts, we actually have two methods that we could use. We have the percentage of completion and the second one is our um, cost recovery method or zero profit method or ZPM. When are we going to use percentage of completion or when are we going to use zero profit method? We will be going, we are going to use percentage of completion if the collectability is reasonable or reliable. Other term for um, percentage of completion method is cost-to-cost -cost method or input measures or other term is units of delivery under output measures. So what is the difference between cost-to-cost -cost method and unit of de delivery method under percentage of completion. But again, before we move with this, these two type of percentage of completion, percentage of completion from the term itself, percentage of completion, we will be recognizing profit. We will be realizing gross profit from our total revenue equal or equivalent to the percentage of completion of the project. So meaning if the project is 20% completed, 50% completed, and so on, then that would also be the equivalent profit that we, we will be recognizing throughout the contract. So in accounting for percentage of completion, we actually have two types as what I have said earlier, cost-to-cost -cost method or unit of delivery method. Under input measure or cost-to-cost -cost method, this method is used if the contract calls for one large project rather than several separate projects. Under this method, the degree of completion is determined by computing the ratio of the cost already incurred to the total estimated cost to complete the project. So under input measures, it is usually um, used when the project is single 
lang na contract or single, it only includes single project. So to account input measures, we sim we simply compute the percentage of completion by dividing the total cost incurred over total expected um, total expected cost of the project. So that is why it is called as cost to cost method. It is the most common um, way of accounting under percentage of completion. While on the other hand, we also have output measures or our unit of delivery. In unit of in unit of delivery, revenue is recognized when certain phases of the project are completed and accepted by the buyer. This method is useful in contracts for the construction of several units. Okay. Income is recognized when a particular unit is completed and accepted by the buyer, although the entire project is not yet finished. So under output measures naman, um, the basis of our percentage of completion will not be the total cost incurred up, up to a specific date, but rather it's on the total number of units finished for a specific date. So that is why unit of delivery method or output measure method is commonly used when there is several projects for a specific contract. Example um, is the construction of um, real estate that includes, for example, several buildings or several houses. So let us, say, let us say the contract includes building of 10 houses. And then as of the moment, for a specific date, you were able to finish con con constructing 5 out of 10. So therefore, our basis in computing for the percentage of completion will not be the total cost incurred for a specific date, but rather it's on the actual number of units or number of houses finished for a specific date. So let us say you have finished 5 out of 10, then therefore your percentage of completion will be 50 or from 5 over 10. So that is percentage of completion. Again, percentage of completion, we will be using percentage of completion when the collectability of our receivable is reliable or can be ascertained reasonably. The other way of or the other method of accounting for our LTCC is your zero profit method. Under zero profit method, guys, or it is also known as um, or it is a method where it, we will use or it's the method used when the collectability of our revenue or our total receivable is not reliable. Okay, This method is used when the outcome cannot be reasonably estimated. The revenue to be recognized is equal to the cost incurred only until the project is finished. So no gross profit will be recognized until the project is finished. So C0 profit method, guys, is actually um, somehow the same with cost recovery method that we have discussed in our previous lecture in installment sales. So under this method, we will not be recognizing any gross profit as long as we were not able to recover the total cost of the project yet. So any subsequent collection, the moment we have um, exhausted or collected the total um, contract cost, then that's the only the timing where we will be recognizing or we will be recording gross profit. But as to um, as to the times where our total profit is not yet fully collected, then therefore no gross profit will be recognized. But in this um, lecture, we will be assuming that in cases. Um, um, we will be assuming that in problems, we will be solving it in both cases, whether it's under ZPM or under cost of or POC, percentage of completion method. So for example, we have here AMG Construction Company agrees to build a large building for PG Towers for a total contract price of $5 million. PG Towers will make annual payment to AMG, but the amount of these payments cannot exceed the direct cost incurred by AMG. So the contract is signed on October 1, 2018, and AMG's year-end is December 31, 2000, December 31 of a specific year. Now, the contract provides PG with its final inspection right to ensure compliance with the contract terms prior to accepting the completed project. So again, we have here two parties, our contractor and our client. So the contractor here is obviously 
AMG Construction and our client here is PG Towers. So again, we will be assuming that ourselves are the accountants of AMG Construction. So here's the details about that um, contract. So we have there the total contract price of 5 million total contract price of 5 million and then total anticipated cost as at um, October 2018 when the contract was um, incepted and then um, the expected cost incurred per, per year. So we have three years. So the years of construction will be for three years started last um, started on October 2018 up to 2020. So we have here cost incurred each year. So cost incurred, these are the total costs that in, that is incurred by the contractor. So what are the um, components of these total costs? So it might include three um, components, just like um, constructing or just like in a manufacturing firm. For you to... Um, for you to create or to manufacture a product, so there are three important na mga um, cost incurred. Namely, first, the raw materials. So in this case, since it's a, it's a construction, the materials maybe are the cement, the necessary materials in building that tower. Second, we have um, salaries, salaries to our laborers, and um, salaries to uh, any direct labor that is related in the construction of that building or that tower and the third possible cost that is included in that cost incurred is the factory overhead so factory overhead are those indirect material and indirect labor that is again related in the construction so those are the three uh, possible in, uh, con inclusion of this cost incurred each year so we have 1350 for 2018, 2250 for 2019, and 400 for 2020. And we also have their estimated cost to complete each year. So that means um, uh, estimated cost to complete, meaning these are the expected costs that the contractor is anticipating to incur in the coming years. So for the first year, um, after incurring 1350, the contractor is still expecting to incur 3,150 more for the next coming years and 400,000 for 2019. And take note, wala na tayo estimated cost to complete for 2020 because um, the contract will end on 2020. So it is expected that this entire project will end on 2020. We also have here the data for our progress billings each year. So when we talk about progress billings, guys, these are the billings we have uh, given to our client, meaning this is the receivable of the entity of the contractor billed to our clients. So in 2018, we have billed the client for 400,000, 2 million for 2019, and 2.6 million for 2020. So again, progress billings is our receivable to our clients. And then we also have our data for progress payments received each year. Progress payments, at the same time, this is the collection made by our client. So in 2018, there is a 275,000 collection, 2.1 million for 2019, and um, 2,625,000 for 2020. So in this case, since it is expected that the tower or the, the the project will be delivered on 2020 the client would also expect is is also expected to pay the total balance of the contract price on 2020 so in this case for example the total contract amount is 5 million okay the total contract amount is 5 million but the client managed to pay only 275 for 2018 and 2.1 million for 2019. So therefore, it is expected to pay the balance at the end of 2020 when the delivery of the tower or when actually the, the I know, not the physical delivery of the tower, but the constructive delivery of the tower 
the symbolic delivery of the tower. After that symbolic delivery of the tower, it before the symbolic uh, delivery of the tower, that means si client nato is required to pay the balance of 2,625,000. But the problem here, guys, is how are we going to recognize and how much are we going to recognize gross profit every year from 2018 up to 2020. So again, from our mentioned methods earlier, we can use two methods. If again, the collection is um, estimated reliably or the construction contract can be estimated reliably, then therefore we will use POC method or the percentage of compression. But if it's otherwise, then therefore we will use zero profit method or ZPM. But in this case, let's try to account both. No? Para makumpire na to, how much will be recognized under POC and how much will be recognized under um, ZPM. Although, for the entire three years, the total revenue will just be the same. But our our issue here is the timing. On 2018, how much will be recognized as gross profit? 2019 and 2020, and 2020 under percentage of completion and under um, zero profit method. Just like how we discussed installment sales last time, comparing it from um, realized profit method and uh, no, realized, profit, realized profit method and cost recovery method. So for example, we have here the... Um, recognition of our construction revenue per year using percentage of completion. So you have here, guys, total contract price of 5 million. So input, total contract price. So that is for the entire term of the contract, 5 million. So let's focus this time for 2018. So we have cost incurred to date na 1,350,000. So that 1,350,000 is given naman that is the total cost incurred now for the year 2018. So again, as what I have mentioned earlier, cost incurred might be from raw materials, from direct labor, and from our factory overhead in building such tower. And we also have estimated cost to complete na 3,100,000. 3,150,000. So therefore, in 2018, our total estimated cost sa project is 4.5 million. To compute for your total estimated cost, you just simply add total cost incurred to date plus estimated cost to complete to compute for your total estimated cost. So to compute our expected gross profit for 2018, we have total contract price of 5 million minus total estimated cost of 4.5 million. So that means we are expecting a gross profit for 500,000. So that 500,000 guys is expected for expected um, gross profit for year 2018. But again, we are using percentage of completion. That means we will not be recognizing the entirety of that 500,000 because the entire project is not yet 100% completed. So we will simply multiply it by 30%. Okay? But the problem in this time is how did we compute 30%? Where did we get that 30%? So again, we are using cost-to-cost -cost basis here. So again, since we are using cost-to-cost -cost basis, then therefore we will be computing your gross profit rate based on the total cost incurred to date over the total expected cost. So in this case, we have total incurred to date na 1,350,000 divided by your total estimated cost of the contract, which is 4.5 million. So 30% is from 1,350,000. So that's 1,350,000 divide 4.5 million. So that is 30%. So multiply your percentage of completion, which is 30% to your expected gross profit na 500,000. So therefore, we have a gross profit to date na 150,000. So at the end of 2018, we will be recognizing gross profit of 150,000. So from 500,000 na expected gross profit, 150,000 of it will be recognized in the year 2018. If on the succeeding years, in the succeeding years, this 150,000 will also be deducted to compute for the gross profit to be recognized for a specific year. So in this case, since wala man tayo prior 
na recognized gross profit. So therefore, we will deduct nothing sa 150. So therefore, pagka 2018, we will, re we will really be recognizing 150,000 as our gross profit. Now, let's proceed for 2019. So same pagka 2019. So we have 5 million na contract price and then cost incurred to date na 3.6 million. So again, guys, the problem might give you cost incurred to date or cost incurred per year. Okay? So you should be, be very careful on how the problem is presented or how the given is presented in the problem. So in this case, cost incurred to date. So that means this 3.6 million already includes 1,350,000. But the problem might also give you specific cost incurred per year. So therefore, you need to properly account them in computing for your percentage of completion later on. So in this case, you have your total estimated cost to complete, na 400,000. So therefore, your total estimated cost of 4 million. So from 4.5 million last 2018, nahimo na lang siyang 4 million for 2019. So obviously, this time, your expected gross profit will also change from 500,000 to 1 million. Because again, your total estimated cost from 2018 was 4.5 million. And here comes 2019, nag-change ang ato ang total estimated cost. So therefore, nag-change po ang atong expected gross profit to 1 million. And now, let's compute it for our percentage of completion for us to compute for the gross profit to date. So we have there, 3.6 million total cost incurred to date. 3.6 million divide 1 million. Ah, sorry, divide 4 million na estimated total cost or total estimated cost. So that's 3.6 divide 4. So that will give you 90%. So 1 million times 90%. So gross profit to date will be 900,000. So since this is cumulative, guys, that 900,000 already includes your 150,000 na gross profit recognized in 2018. So therefore, to compute for the gross profit to be recognized in 2019 is you need to deduct whatever gross profit you have um, you have recognized in the past. So in this case, one year pa lang man ang nag, nag lapse. So therefore, 150 lang ang atong i-deduct to compute for the gross profit recognized for 2019. So we have 750,000 from 900 minus 150,000. Okay? Same with, same process kay 2020, guys. So in this case, um, wala na tayo estimated cost to complete since expected na na 100% completed pagka 2020. Okay? Ang contract is only, will only end up to 2020. So we have their cost incurred to date na 4 million. So that means, the total contract only incurred 4 million. So from 4 million, divide it with our total estimated cost na 4 million. So our percentage of completion will now be 100%. And take note, pila nga itong expe ex expected gross profit. So our expected gross profit is still 1 million. From estimated total cost na 4 million to be deducted from our total contract price na 5 billion. So we have 1 million expected gross profit times 100%. So we have gross profit to date na 100,000. Just like how we accounted for or how we computed the gross profit from 2019, we need also to deduct the gross profit recognized from previous years. So in this case, guys, natay 150,000 for 2018 and 750,000 for 2019. Or simply the 900,000 that we have computed na gross profit to date on 2019. That will be deducted here sa 1 million. So in this case, pagka 2020, we will be recognizing gross profit of 100,000. So therefore, from the entire contract, our gross profit realized is 1, mil 1 million, uh, 150, 750, and 100,000. So that is under percentage of completion. Now, we also have an alternative way of computing for your gross profit per year. So, this is simply um, computing for your uh, contract price earned or value of the contract earned per year. So, in this case, so you still need to compute for your expected um, percentage of completion. So, same method 
na atong gibuhat ka ganina para makompute ang 30%, 90%, o 100%. But in this case, again, um, i-multiply na to siya diretsyo sa ato ang contract price to compute for the value of the contract earned. And then you simply div, uh, deduct the cost incurred to date. Okay? Katong cost incurred for a specific date. So from that, we have 1.5 million minus 1,350,000. So therefore, your gross profit to date is 150. Minus gross profit earned in the prior year since wala man tayo na-recognize in the prior year. So in this year, 150,000. Same with tw pagka 2019 and pagka 2020. You just simply multiply the percentage of completion sa contract price and then deduct ni mo ang cost incurred to date. But again, you still need to compute for your percentage of completion because that might not be given in the problem. So that is under percentage of completion. Now this time, let's account under zero profit method. Again, the concept here in zero profit method, we will not be recognizing any gross profit as long as we will not be able to collect the total cost of the contract. Okay? So in this case, we have a total revenue of 150,000, uh, 1,350,000 for 2018. And then we also have uh, 2,250,000 for 2019 and 1.4 million for 2020. Okay, all the revenues recognized in 2018, guys, will be um, fully applied to the total cost since your total cost here, guys, is. Um, 4 million. Diba? Your total cost here is 4 million. So therefore, as long as your total cost is not yet fully, ano, fully collected or fully recognized, then therefore you will not recognize any gross profit at all. So pagka 2018, mag-recognize taog 1,350,000. So that 1,350,000 is equivalent to the cost incurred in 2018. And then, Pagka 2019, we are to recognize um, 2,250,000. And then, pagka 2020, um, napatay na bilin ng 400,000 na lang. So again, that is one, th this is 400,000 only, not 1.4 million. So therefore, pagka 2020, pagka 2020 lang ta mag-recognize o total na gross profit. When the total... Um, cost of the project or of the project is fully collected already. Okay? Now, so let's present the journal entries necessary in um, accounting for long-term construction contracts. So this time, let us compare journal entries under percentage of completion method and under zero, zero profit method. So again, we have here on January, on October 2018, there was contract signing both for the client and the contractor. So in this case, when the contract was incepted, no necessary entry, no? No necessary entry is made both under zero profit method and under percentage of completion. Another, we have cost incurred. Take note that on the first year in 2018, we incurred a total of 150,000. So again, the total cost can be from our direct material, direct labor, and our factory overhead. So from the given early year, um, we have a total cost incurred for 2018 na 1,350,000. So therefore, in the books of the client, in the books of the contractor, our journal entry there is debit to CIP or construction in progress, credit to cash for 1,350,000. So the journal entry is um, the same under zero profit method and under percentage of completion. So again, guys, all um, cost incurred in long-term construction contracts will be debited to our CIP or construction in progress. Another is for our entry upon billing. So in 2018, guys, um, let's go back with our problem earlier. In 2018, sorry, we have in 2018 progress billings for 2018 of 400,000. Okay, 
So that 400,000. So since we have billed our client for 400,000 in 2018, so ang journal entry na to, dara, guys, will be debit to accounts receivable, credit to contract billings. Okay, this is to record the billing of the contractor to the client. So there is a 400,000 na billing. So debit to accounts receivable, credit to contract billing for 400,000. So same also under zero profit method and under percentage completion of percentage completion method. And then number four is billing collections. So journal entry upon collection from 400,000, the contract billing, we were able to collect down 275. So that means debit to cash for 275,000 and then credit to accounts receivable for 275,000 also. So in in these two methods of accounting our long-term construction contracts, mag-differ lang siya at year-end upon revenue recognition. Because under zero profit method, again, we will not recognize any gross profit. But the reality percentage of completion, we will recognize gross profit. So again, under zero profit method, guys, we have a total cost of construction na 1,350,000. Okay, under zero profit method, Construction revenue is recognized equal to the cost incurred each year. So thereby, in in that year, in that 2018, we will be recognizing contract revenue of 1,350,000 equal to the cost incurred to date or cost incurred for the year 2018, which is 1,350,000. Okay? So again... Contract revenue under zero profit method only includes your total cost incurred. No recognition of gross profit for zero profit method. Okay. However, in under percentage of completion, revenue is recognized each year by debiting the construction in progress account under the percentage of completion method. When the contract is completed and the customer has been fully billed, the amount in the construction in progress account should be equal to the amount in the account contract billings or the contract billings. So again, um, again, in percentage of completion, guys, since under this method, we will be recognizing gross profit naman. So therefore, your total contract revenue here will be um, a component of the total cost incurred plus your uh, total gross profit. And your gross profit will be credited to your construction in progress. Okay? Construction in progress. So debit to construction in progress for 150000 Debit to cost of construction of 1350000 And then credit to contract revenue of 1.5 million. So again, under percentage of completion, your gross profit recognized will be debited to your construction in progress. Now, let's proceed to for year 2019. So same entry for the recording of cost incurred. We have debit to construction in progress, credit to cash for 2,250,000, and then progress billings since nag build another another set of billing to our client for 2 million so debit to accounts receivable credit to contract billings of 2 million also and then same with our um, collection of our billing debit cash and then accounts receivable for 2.1 million so in this case um we have here another um recognition of revenue for the second year so again since wala pa na fully um, exhaust ang ato ang total cost. So, we will recognize nothing under zero profit method as our gross profit. So, our recognition lang of revenue in zero profit method is only equivalent to the total cost incurred in this year. So, we have debit to cost of construction for 2250 credit to construction revenue for 2250000 And then, under percentage of completion, since naka recognized og 750,000 from our computation earlier, so debit uh, cost uh, CIP construction in progress for 750,000 
debit to cost of construction for 2250000 and then our total construction revenue or total revenue to be recognized under percentage of completion will be $3 million. And then also for the third year, guys, the last year, so same pro forma ato ang buhaton dari up until revenue recognition. But an, under revenue recognition, um, under revenue recognition, si zero profit will now recognize a total gross profit of 1 million. Okay? Since ang total cost na to nga 4 million is already um, collected in full. So let's try to account C 4 million. Diba? We have cost of construction of 1 million 350 for year 1. So 1 million 350 for year 1 plus. Cost incurred for year 2 na 2 million 250. So that means. 3.6 million na ang atong na-incur for 2 years. So, ang nabili na lang na wala na to na recognize from the total cost is 400,000. So, therefore, debit ta cost of construction na 400,000 from 4 million na total cost minus the total cost incurred from year 1 and 2 na 3.6 million. So, therefore, naatay 400,000 na cost of construction. And then, um, construction revenue na 1.4 million. So therefore, we recognize construction in progress na 1 million pesos for CIP. And then, dari apagka percentage of completion, um, under percentage of completion, we have total construction revenue of 500,000. So that is from our cost incurred ng 400,000 plus our ano plus our 100 nga um, gross profit computed earlier for year 2020 okay so in this case guys um, your total profit will just be the same regardless if it's percentage of completion or zero profit method but again the only difference is the timing when the timing of recognition under percentage of completion we um piecemeal rec there is a piecemeal recognition of our gross profit pero dri kay zero profit ano lump sum ang yang recognition of gross profit at the end of the contract and last na journal entry na to guys we need to close or to eliminate our inventory by closing our contract billings to our construction in progress okay so Dapat at the end of the contract, your total CIP and your total CB or your CB and your total CIP or contract billings and construction in progress will be equal because this will be closed to each other in order to eliminate the inventory of the client because that will now be delivered uh, of the, that will, okay, break ako ha. Dapat at the end of the contract, your contract billings and your construction in progress in the books of the contractor will be equal to eliminate that uh, to eliminate that account in the books of the contractor. Since we will now be delivering that delivery uh, inventory, delivering that inventory sa ato ang client. Okay, so dapat na ay equal, bag equal ang atong um, contract billings at the end of the contract. So, let's try now to um, assess kung ang total CB and CIP ba na to for the three years totals ano, 500,000. So, let's try to account for year one. So, pag year one, so naata dira ay um, total um, CIP of 1,350. For example, under under zero profit method. So, under zero profit method na atay, CIP na 1,350,000. Okay? Meron tayong CIP for 1,350,000. Let's have for 2019. We have 2,250,000. 2,250,000. Okay, wala man tayong CIP diri asa um, gross profit. Plus, ang CIP na to pagka third year, which is 400 plus ito CIP for the recognition of revenue nga 1 million so in that case we have a total CIP of 5 million okay naka debit na ang ato ang CIP pero pag eliminate nato sa inventory ato ang e credit ang ato ang CIP 
So let's try to account also for our contract billings. Dapat ang atong contract billings will also have a total of 5 million. So under zero profit, natay contract billing na 400. So we have 400 for year 1 plus contract billings na 2 million for year 2 plus ano, 26 for year 3. 26. So we have a total also of 6 million. So before ma-eliminate ang ato ang inventory guys, before ang delivery sa atong inventory padulong kay client, natay total debit of CIP nga 5 million and total credit nga contract billings nga 5 million. Okay? Before ang delivery sa project dito kay client. Pag human og deliver, i-close na nato ang ato ang CB ug CIP. So that is why gi-debit nato si contract billings and gi-credit nato si construction in progress. So mawala na ni sila na mga account si CB ug si construction in progress right after the delivery of the the project kay client. Okay? So every year magadako ang ato ang construction in progress. So for example, for year 1, ang balance sa ato ang CIP is 1350 and then ang balance sa atong contract billing is 400. Okay? In our financial statements, asa man na nato i-recognize si CIP ug si contract billing. Okay, sa sa financial statements allowed siya nga i-offset. Okay? Isa siya sa mga um Exception to exception sa rule nga bawal ang offset. So this time, um, we will be um, offsetting construction in progress or contract billing. Or kung dili ni mo i-offset, pwede nga i-present ni mo si construction in progress sa FS. It will be presented in our FS as current asset. Si contract billing naman will be presented as current liability. Okay, again, na kay choice nga i-present nimo sila sa FS separately. I separate nimo report si CIP, i separate nimo report si contract billings. So again, kung i separate nimo si CIP, si CIP that will be um that will be recorded sa imong asset and si contract billing that will be um recorded sa imong liability. But again, if you will o i-offset ni mo, pag-offset ni mo, kung mas dako si CIP, si that will be recognized as current asset. Kung mas dako si project or si contract billing, that will be accounted as current liability. Okay? Kung i-offset ni mo, kung mas dako si CIP, so in this case, mas dako man si CIP kay 1,350 under zero profit method. Under zero, uh, under zero profit method, ang CIP na to 1,350 pero ang contract billing na to is only 400. So, mas dako man si CIP. So, therefore, CI, CIP will be ano, 1,350 minus 400. So, CIP will be recognized as current asset nga 950,000. Pero kung again, mas dako si contract billing, then contract billing ang atong recording, it will be recorded sa current liability. If the contract provided for billings in excess of the cost incurred, so the construction in progress account could be less than the contract billings account. So in that case, the difference is presented as a current liability, labeled due to customers or another appropriate type. So that's generally the accounting of our um, long-term construction contracts. Okay? So this time, let's proceed with um, possible anticipated loss of long-term construction projects. So anticipated loss for the entire project may arise particularly when there is change in the total estimated cost. So from the total cost earlier, that estimated th that the same estimated cost can be changed. So therefore, anticipated loss occur when the total estimated cost exceed the total revenue from the contract. So, anticipated loss shall be recognized immediately, okay, without considering the degree of completion. So, the same treatment apply whether percentage of completion or zero profit method is used. So, again, it is very clear that when there is 
anticipated loss, you will not, you will no longer use percentage of completion, but rather you will immediately recognize it without considering degree of completion. So for example, we have here case one, loss in the year of revision of estimated cost, but profit in total contract. Okay, loss in the year of revision, pero estimated, estimated cost but profit in the total contract. So, revising the data in illustration 1-1, nga gigamit na to kaganina, assume that at the end of 2019, the estimated cost to complete was increased to 1,260,000. And this was the actual cost incurred in 2020. So, same tadriya pagka 2019, guys, ang kaya... Ang nalahi lang man daw is ang 2019 because what has changed is only for 2019. So, dili na nato hilabdan ang pagka 2018 because it will still, we will still recognize the same gross profit for 2018 which is 150,000 from the same process we had earlier. Now, let's have for 2019. Na daw tay, um, Estimated cost to complete for 2019 na 1260000 If you could still remember, ang ato estimated cost to complete here um, was, I think, 400000 from before. So this time, 1260000 na. Okay? 1260000 So therefore, from our total cost incurred to date na 3.6 million plus 1 million 260. So therefore, we will now have a total estimated cost na 4 million 860,000. Okay? 4 million 860,000. So, i-compare na to na siya sa atong total contract price na 5 million. So, ang atong total expected profit lang is 140. Okay? 140. Times, let's compute for our percentage of completion. So, pila na atong percentage of completion dira ah. So, that's 36 divide 4860. So, that is um 74.07% or 75%. Or 75%, so 140 times 75%, your total gross profit to date was only 105,000. And that 105,000 is already gross profit to date. Okay? So that includes the 150, dapat. So therefore, when we deduct 150,000, we will recognize loss of 45,000 pagka 2019. So we will be recognizing loss nga 45,000 for 2019. Now, continuing our illustration for year 2020, so we have here total uh, cost incurred to date na uh, 4,860,000 for 2020. Okay? 4,860,000. So, zero na itong estimated cost to complete kay mag-end ba na itong contract for 2020. So, 5 million minus 4,860. So, therefore, natay total profit na 140 natay expected profit na 140,000 times 100% na gross profit rate so ang atoa lang gross profit to date is 140 okay 140,000 so we have gross profit to date na 140,000 minus the gross profit recognized sa previous year so in this case we have 105,000 so, we have 140 minus 105,000. So, we will be recognizing 35,000 gross profit for year 2020. Okay? The journal entry for this specific problem. So, for years 2018 to 2020, under um, percentage of completion method and under zero profit method, for 2018, guys, recognition of revenue na lang ito, guys, ha? Um, on 2018, under percentage of completion, pilaman ang ato ang cost dito. Uh, still, we have 1,350 from our total cost incurred for 2018, 1,350. And then atay total gross profit ng 150. So again, that 150 will be recognized as CIP. So debit to construction, cost of construction for 150. Debit to construction in progress for 150. And then credit to construction revenue for 1.5 million. So, dari ata pagka 2019, guys. Diba pagka 2019, kay naamantay loss nga 45,000. So, unsa may effect aning loss ato ang um, CIP. 
what will be the effect of that loss at wang CIP. So, so since it is a loss, it will no longer be debited to CIP, but rather, it will be credited to our CIP nga 45,000. So, loss man siya, i-credit na to siya sa CIP. So, therefore, ang ato ang um, CIP to date will now be 150 minus 45. So, ang CIP to date na to is 105,000 na for 2019, kaya nag-minus man taong 40, 45,000 for the year 2019. And then, pagka 2020, nakarecognize na po taong 35,000 na gross profit, so i-add back na po na to na siya sa ito ang CIP. So, debit CIP for 35,000. So, therefore, ang atong total uh, gross profit for the entire contract will be 150 minus 45 Ma minus 45 plus 35. So, we'll have a total gross profit recognized for three years under gross profit method, uh, uh, under percentage of completion nga 140,000. And under zero profit method naman, walang difference because the difference is, ano lang, the timing man, ba? So, therefore, ang tibuok nga 140,000 i-recognized na nimo at the end. So, that is why we have debited CIP for gross profit lang nimo of 140,000 at the end or on 2020, which is the last year of the contract. Okay? Let's have another case. This time, loss is in the year of revision of the total estimated cost, but overall loss on the contract. So, kaganina, although there is a loss, Pero, in the entire contract, nagka-gain gaya po taog 140. No? Although there is a loss for a particular year, pero nagka-loss gaya po taog, uh, nagka taog 140 for the entire contract. So, this time, sa case 2, loss in the year of revision, so nagka-loss for a specific year, and then overall, contract also incurred a loss. Okay? For example, assume the data in our previous illustration except that in 2019, the estimated cost to complete were 1.5 instead of 400. So, natay cost to complete nga 1.5 million here. So, again, wala tay problema pagka 2018 because pagka 2019 lang man tanag change og estimated cost to complete. So, in this case, guys, we have cost incurred na 3.6 million for 2019 and then total estimated cost to complete na 1.5 million. So, if we will add these two, it will give us a total estimated cost na 5.1 million, which is 100,000 higher than our contract price. So, natay expected gross loss na 100 thousand. We have expected gross loss na 100,000. Multiply it by uh, per percentage of completion na 100,000, uh, 70%. Although, again, guys, not a percentage of completion, but take note, since there is a gross loss, delete na ta magamit all percentage of completion again. The entire 100,000 will be recognized as gross loss for that year. Okay? So, delete na to i-multiply ang 100,000 sa 70%. Kaganina, gimultiply pa nato siya sa 75,000 kay gross profit man ang 140. Na may profit pa ang 140. So there therefore nagan gimultiply pa gyapon nato siya sa GPR. Pero this time since gross loss naman ang outcome ana 100,000 loss. So therefore dili na ta magamit og percentage. Automatic according to the standard immediate recognize the gross loss. So, for the year 2019, recognize 100,000 as gross loss minus the gross profit recognized for 2018 which is 150,000. So, therefore, tumataging ting na 250,000 loss ang atong i-recognize for 2019. Okay? That's for 2019. Now, pagka 2020, balik ta, so, we have 5.1 million at ang total cost incurred to date and then wala na tayo estimated cost to complete. So, we have still a gross loss of 100,000 times 100%. So, again, wala man dili na dapat po na i-multiply 100% kay gross, lo uh, gross loss man automatic 100%. Thank you, Cha. Regardless kung pila na yung percentage of completion. So, that's 100,000 minus, minus, guys, minus negative 100. Okay? Nga, uh, gross profit to date na to pagka 2019. So, in this case, negative 100 minus negative 100 
So therefore, ang atong gross profit for the year will be zero. Okay? Negative 100 minus negative 100. So your answer will be zero. Okay? So this will now be your accounting if there is a loss on the revision of the total estimated cost and overall loss on the contract. So you have there your journal entry, guys. Under zero profit method, anticipated loss is recognized immediately at the end of 2019 because there is anticipated over, overall loss on the contract. So to record the anticipated loss of 100,000 in the 2019, so again guys, diba, sa 2019, kay wala man dapat tayo i-recognize na gross profit kung, uh, per, kung wala pa na to na collect at tanan cost. But in this case, this case will be, ano, this case will be um, special. Kay since loss man siya, regardless kung wala pa na recognize tanan, diba, wala pa na recognize tanan cost, we will recognize your loss. So this time, credit tayo on CIP on 2019 bisan pag wala pa na human ang kontrata. So debit to cost of construction na 2,250,000 credit to construction in progress for the loss ng 100,000 and then credit to construction revenue which is the cost incurred for 2019 for 2,150,000. At the end of 2020, the year of completion, the entry would now be debit to cost of construction na 1.5 and then credit to construction revenue which is cost incurred for 2020 na 1.5 million. So if you have noticed, kung naapalang tay total profit deria at the end of 2020, nag-debit on ta deria of construction in progress. Pero again, in 2020, zero man ang atong gross profit. So wala tay gi-debit dira ang ha? total cost. Uh, I mean, wala tayo gidebit na ang total cost uh, CIP for the gross profit because in the first place, we don't have profit man for the entire contract but rather loss of 100,000. Under percentage of completion naman guys, your journal entry will be ano, to properly recognize the entire loss in the year it is anticipated then that the cumulative cost to be deducted from cumulative revenue is not the actual cost, but must be cumulative revenue plus anticipated loss. Thus, in our example, the cumulative revenue at the end of 2019 would be 3.5 times uh, from 5 billion times 70%, and the cumulative cost at the same year would be ano, 3.6 from 3.5 million plus 100,000. Since it is assumed that 150 profit was recognized in 2018, then the total loss to be recognized in 2019 will be 250,000 to total loss as as computed kaganina de ba nagkalos taog 100,000 for 2019 tapos nakarecognize naman taog gross profit for the first year nga where in fact dili dapat kay ang ang result sa entire contract kay loss of 100 pero nagrecognize na kag gross profit pagka 2018 og 150 so therefore um, overstated ang gross profit ni mo pagka 2018 o 150,000. So therefore, you need to adjust that overstatement of your gross profit for 2018. So that is why we recognize total loss dari ang 250,000. So debit to cost of construction nga 2,250,000, credit to construction revenue for 2 million, and then credit to CIP which is the loss of 250,000. Okay, so that is if there's loss. Now this time, let's proceed to the last subtopic, contract retention. So in contract retention, guys, to make sure that the project will be completed, the client may retain part of the billings and this may not be paid until the project is not completed and accepted. So for example, if the client retain 10% of the total billing amounting to 1 million, and the contractor agreed for it, then only 900,000 will be collected by the contractor. So the entry to record the collection would be debit to cash for 900,000, debit to contract retention for 100,000, and then credit to accounts receivable for 1 million. So ang concept lang aning contract retention is ano, for security. Nga dili, nga dapat humano ni contractor ang project. But again, that contract retention will be collected ni contractor if the 
project is already delivered. Okay? I-defer I -defer sa ang pagbayad ni client sa contract retention. But once the total project is completed, then the remaining contract retention will also be collected by the contractor. Contract retention is presented in the balance sheet as current asset. Okay, so I think that's the end. Uh, okay, before we end, let's just have um, important notes in long-term construction contracts. So at the completion of the project, at the completion of the project, the construction in progress and the progress billings must be closed and must have a zero balance. So katong gimension ako kaganina na at the end of the contract, dapat si CIP o si progress billings nato or si construction billings nato will have a zero balance kaya i-close man ni mo sila with each other. The difference between CIP and PB must be presented as current asset or current liability. So there is current asset when CIP is greater than progress billings. Otherwise, it is a current liability. Another, if there are several projects that are interrelated with the same client, the construction in progress and progress billings can be combined. The determination of current liability in current asset is the difference between the total CIP and total PB of all the projects. So you need also to consider, guys, computing for the current asset and current liabilities at, as, uh, at the end of a particular year. So I might be asking that with you in the problems. If each project has different client, then CIP and PB must be determined in each project as well as the determination of current asset and current liability. So that is obvious. So if you have different clients, then therefore you need also to separate your CIP for, for example, client A and CIP for client B and so on. And then lastly, if there's change in the contract price, the treatment is currently and prospectively. Okay? Currently and prospective application. So, I think that's the end of our uh, video lecture and discussion for long-term construction contracts. So, if you have more clarifications, please take it down and um, we will be answering that on our video, uh, on our virtual class. So, again, here's the um, references used, primarily the book of Guerrero for this discussion. I think that's the end of our video lecture. See you next time and be safe as always. Goodbye.